Section 2-4, Graphs That Enlight and Graphs That Deceive. So in this section, we will be talking about graphs. The idea is to identify suitable graphs to represent a particular data set. And the graph should be effective in revealing important characteristics of the data. But sometimes, graphs are bad in the sense that they contain errors or they might mislead the audience. So we'll take a look at a few of those as well. Let's start with some good graphs. A scatter plot is a type of graph where you plot paired data. In this particular example, we can take a look at a waist circumference and an arm circumference for a randomly selected male and we can check this scatter plot to see if we can find a particular pattern. A time series graph is a graph that's essentially a scatter plot where the x value or the horizontal axis would be time. A dot plot is a plot of dots that represent each data value. A stem plot or stem leaf plot would be a plot where you would represent each number with the last digit in the in the leaf part on the right side and the other digits as a stem part on the left side. So in this example, the first stem and leaf combination would represent two numbers, 50 and 60. So we have the number 5 representing the 10th position, the number 0 and 6 representing the 1's position. On the 11th row over here, we have 11 and then 1, 5, 5, 8. That would represent 111, 115, another 115, and then 118. So in the last stem and leaf over here, we would have 141, and that would be just one number. This is a good way to take a look at frequencies where the classes are in the tenths, or in this case, fifties, in the sixties, and seventies, eighties, etc. A bar graph shows a frequency of something that may not be quantitative. So if we have categories, then we can put them in bar graphs. A multiple bar graph could have a set of two or more bars when we're comparing data sets. For example, we have a multiple bar graph here comparing the median income of men and women in each of, the, uh, each of these decades. A Pareto chart is a bar graph that is sorted according to the highest frequency. A pie chart is a frequency graph that separates this out of 100%. A frequency polygon uses line segments to connect the points of each of these frequencies. A relative frequency polygon is the same except we're looking at relative frequencies and an ogive connects these dots of cumulative frequencies. So now let's take a look at some graphs that might deceive. One of the common ways to deceive an audience would be to make a graph where your axis does not start with zero. If you consider the vertical axis for these two graphs, the first one 
has a, a vertical axis starting at 30. And if you look at these three bars for the first graph, they look like there are big differences between them. But if you look at the second graph, if you start this graph at 0 and you look at the three bars, the three bars are pretty close to being the same. So starting your graph at another value aside from 0 would actually exaggerate the differences. That might be useful for some companies, but it is also a little deceiving. Pictographs are another way to deceive or distract the audience. Bar graphs are usually a good way to represent differences in values. But if you put some noise around that, it could be a little confusing. For example, if we're looking at the income based on education, we see that we can look at these bar graphs sideways but because of the image of the dollar bill there, it, it gets a little busy and sometimes might be a little too difficult to understand. Another representation of the same data set would be using volumes. Now if we take a look at volumes, this last one with the advanced degree seems really huge, a lot bigger. But in reality, it's only about four times as large. So the volume amplifies your values. Really, to keep it simple, if we just look at a simple bar graph, it's really the best thing to, to represent these values. And then we can see that for somebody that has no high school diploma, compared to somebody with an advanced degree, if you just stack up these bars, it looks like it's one-fourth of the size. And so that's exactly what these data values are telling us. Okay, that is the end of chapter two.